My name is Afaf Noor. I'm one of the um, expert tutors for Audit and Assurance Stream of Papers. The video you're about to watch is on automated tools and techniques in audit, which cover audit software, test data, and data analytics. We're going to look at how this topic has been tested or is frequently tested in the exam. I'm going to tell you how to prepare for this topic because this is primarily knowledge based and we will revise some of the key concepts through examples. Now, automated tools and techniques is an often ignored topic at the preparatory stage. By the end of this video, you would be quite comfortable um, with not just the key concepts, but also how you can actually score well in this particular topic. We will start off with the checklist of topics that you should be comfortable with. As the testing of this topic is primarily knowledge based, I will tell you how to prepare for this. We'll look at common areas for not being able to attend these questions well in the AA exam. And I will show you examples of how this has been commonly tested in the past. The main aim of this video, however, is to revise the key concepts related to audit software, test data and data analytics. So by the end of this video, your confidence level regarding automated audit tools and techniques will be much higher than it is now. That's definitely a guarantee. Not reasonable assurance, a guarantee. Now, this is an extract from the syllabus guide. Simply put, you should be able to explain with examples the use of audit software, test data, and data analytics tools in audit. Once you have clarity on what these tools and techniques are, you can then prepare the advantages and disadvantages of using these tools and techniques. As there's quite a bit of learning involved in this topic, you can prepare it from chapter 21 of ACCS Study Hub. This way, you can ensure that you have comprehensively covered all elements that can be tested in the AA exam. As is the case with most knowledge-based topics in AA, the main reason for not being able to do well in this topic is lack of knowledge and understanding of the users of these tools and techniques. Subsequently, you're not going to be able to discuss advantages, challenges, etc. either. Now, just putting that in there. Okay, so this topic is tested in section A as objective test questions as well as section B, often in combination with substantive procedures. You may also be expected to use these in your answers on questions in internal control. So for example, when you're doing a question on deficiency or test of control, if there's a part of the system which is automated, it can actually be tested through test data that we're going to cover in this video today. So with substantive in your answers of internal controls or knowledge based, this could be tested in various areas in section A and section B. Automated tools and techniques for audit, to be honest, are very simple concepts. These are when auditors use computers for audit procedures at all stages of audit. So be it planning, substantive, control testing or review, the use of computers is basically what we mean by automated tools and techniques in audit. We'll now look at each of these with examples so that your con concepts are very clear by the time you finish watching this video and we'll just start now. Now, simply put, when you are testing internal controls at a client, you can use test data to confirm that the automated system is operating like you were told. So this is when you'll run fake data through the client system to make sure that the program controls are working effectively. If the system is working as intended, valid data should be processed correctly and any invalid data should be rejected by the system. I'll give you an example just to sort of clarify this. So my client is a retailer of luxury clothing and they have told me two things. I'll start with the first one. They have put a range check of one to three on their website. This basically means that any orders that are less than one or more than three will be rejected automatically. So you can't order half a shirt or half a pair of trousers. Less than one or more than three is going to be rejected. In terms of invalid data, I'm going to try and place an order for four 
pieces of clothing to make sure that the system rejects it. So they told me they have an automated control. I'm testing it to make sure it is actually working. In another example, they've also told me that when an order is placed on their website, an email is sent automatically to the warehouse. Now I need to confirm that this is actually being done. So for valid data, I'm going to place a fake order of say two fancy shirts and I will make sure that an email is sent automatically to the warehouse so that they can ultimately dispatch the goods. I'll of course then later on delete that data to make sure I actually don't end up getting free stuff. That would compromise my independence by the way. So this way we can basically say that we are testing the operating effectiveness of the automated internal controls. So test data is fake data that you run through the client system to make sure that the system is working like I was told. Really simple to be honest. Now let's have a look at an example from the past exams. You have information related to a client given. Their employees who are paid on an hourly basis use clock cards to mark their attendance. The clock cards have employee numbers and when they mark their attendance, they are linked to the hours work report produced by the system. So that's the background information given that when I mark my attendance, the hours work report is automatically updated. Now as auditors, this is a very good control. Hours worked are automatically transferred into the payroll system. There is no manual intervention by humans, so there are lesser chances of incorrect hours being input in the calculation of wages. However, we know that we cannot just trust the client, so we need to test this control to see if the hours work report is automatically updated. We can use test data, so we'll enter fake information through a clock card to make sure that the system report is updated automatically. And that's it. It is literally as simple as that. Making sure that you, if there's any valid data that has been processed, please make sure that you delete it once you're done. The second element that we need to talk about, so the first one was test data. The second one is audit software. Now audit softwares are basically programs or softwares that auditors use to process and analyze client's data. They can be a bot off the shelf, which means they are readily available to use immediately, or they can be customized softwares that the firm has gotten developed based on the client's accounting system. In summary, these are softwares that are going to make, a, that are going to make my life easier as an auditor. So for example, they can be used for analytical procedures. Remember, analytical procedures are comparisons that the auditors do at three stages of audit, planning, substantive, and review. Um, an audit software can actually be used to calculate those ratios for you. You can then compare them to last year and investigate any significant differences that have come up. So instead of wasting time on doing the calculations and comparisons, the software will do it for you and you can spend time on investigating the differences. They can also be used to produce aging reports. For receivables, they will help identify debts which might be irrecoverable. For inventory, they can help you identify slow moving inventory which may need to be written down. They can also be used for costing or adding or recalculations. Costing basically means adding. So for example, the software can recalculate the net pay of employees to make sure it is accurate and complete. Audit softwares can also be used to select a sample that represents the population. So they will help in statistical sample selection. Now sampling is used for both tests of controls and substantive procedures. However, an important point to remember or keep in mind is that automated audit tools could actually mean that sampling may not be necessary because these tools can often be used to test the entire population. 
An audit software can also be used to verify cutoff testing, which is when you check whether the last GRN and the last GDN is recorded in the correct accounting period. Remember, your goods received note will do your cutoff for purchases and your goods dispatch note will do your cutoff for uh, sales and automatically your inventory cutoff will be done as well. We're now going to look at an example from a past exam. Your client is a listed company which manufactures stationary products. They close the purchase ledger after the year end and the financial controller is responsible for identifying goods which were received before the year end but the invoice was not received. So remember if you have received the goods that means the liability still has to be yours. As at the year end, as long as you got the goods, you have to record the payable. An accrual is calculated for goods received but not yet invoiced and is included in the payables. Audit strategy has identified a risk over the completeness of payables and accruals and the audit team is going to be using softwares to audit trade payables and accruals. The requirement is that you need to describe audit software procedures which could be carried out during the audit of trade payables. A few key points to note here are that you're testing for understatement of payables and accruals as completeness has been identified as a key risk. So completeness basically covers understatement. You're concerned that they might not have recorded their expense and liability. You will need your knowledge of the uses of audit software and substantive procedures over completeness to actually get the available marks. So this is slightly difficult because it sort of combines two topics. Now let's have a look at the procedures that can be performed. You can use audit software to calculate payable days and compare them to last year. They will help you identify where the days have changed in line with trading levels and expectations. If the payable days have gone down, this could actually indicate that payables are understated. So remember, the first use that we discussed was analytical procedures. I'm using that knowledge of audit software and combining it with my substantive testing knowledge. You can also use audit software to cast or add the payables and accruals listing. This way you can confirm the completeness along with the accuracy of payables. So again, combining my software knowledge to my um, substantive procedures knowledge. You can also use or utilize the software to recalculate the accrual for goods that the client has received, but the supplier has not yet sent the invoice at the year end. Like we discussed earlier, we can also use audit software to undertake cutoff testing by assessing whether the last date of the uh, sorry the date of the last year end recorded belongs to the correct accounting period remember any goods that we received from 1st of january 2027 onwards should be excluded from payables so their year end is 31st december 2026 any goods that i receive the next day should be cut off because they do not belong to the year that i'm auditing so all we did was we combine the uses of audit software with substantive procedures on completeness and we have a complete answer. So this is something that is likely to come up quite often in your exam. We've qu covered quite a bit, so I'm going to uh, check your understanding of test data and audit software through two objective test questions from the past exam. Um, I want you to pause the video here read the question and then come up with the answer before you listen to my debrief. For the question given, you need to identify the correct example of test data. Remember, test data is used to review if the client's system is working as intended. The correct answer is D for Delta. I did not mark it intentionally because I wanted you to think about this yourself. Now, remember, Sample selection, which is A, recalculation and calculation of ratios 
are all users of audit software. D is the correct answer as fake invoices are input in the client system to see if they are processed correctly. Once more, if you could please pause the video, read the question and then uh, listen to the debrief once you've identified the answer. The correct answer is again D for Delta. Uh, this is a coincidence. You're entering invalid data to ensure the system rejects it. So again, as long as you know that test data is for system testing, you can pick up that the remaining three are software techniques. You are extracting a sample. Sample selection was one of the uses. You are checking the total of the cash book. Casting or adding was one of the uses and you're performing an analytical review that we discussed earlier as well. So if you got these right, very well done, you are now quite comfortable with a slightly difficult topic. The last area that we're going to cover is data analytics. It is a relatively newer term, so you might not have seen many questions in the published past exams. We'll try and prepare this topic now by understanding the basic concepts. Um, data analytics is basically when the auditors examine large sets of data to look for patterns or trends or correlation that can then be further investigated. So auditors can actually use visual aids like graphs, uh, plots, pie charts, so that they can pick out the trends more easily. In descriptive information, they might actually be missed out and anything out of the ordinary can then be identified as a risk and followed up and investigated. Very important, larger populations of data can be analyzed very quickly, which basically improves the efficiency of audit procedures. Data analytics can be used throughout the audit. So we'll now look at some examples of use of data analytics at various stages of audit. At the planning stage, they can basically help auditors identify areas of risk. So for example, analysis of revenue can be done product-wise or re region-wise rather than just the total revenue figure for the year. Any significant variances from the expectation then can be looked into in further detail. Aging of receivables can be done quickly to identify de debts which are outstanding for a long time. This can be done for individual customers as well so that you can actually identify their payment trends and see if there's anything out of the ordinary. So a customer who normally pays within 60 days and you have an amount which has been outstanding for more than 90 days is likely to be irrecoverable and may need to be written off. So you can actually go into the in-depth analysis rather than looking at the total figures only. We know that if the auditors evaluate that a client's system is well designed and operating effectively, they can actually reduce substantive testing. So data analytics helps auditors or enables them to examine 100% of the client's transactions. The client's journals or the double entries can be analyzed to identify who is really raising that journal and when. Auditors can also use data analytics to identify fraud risk. For example, they can identify transactions of round sum or amounts which are not used very frequently and they can sort of flag them and investigate them. They can use data analytics for testing user codes to see if segregation of duties is appropriate and whether there's any inappropriate combinations of users who are involved in processing transactions. So we know that the cashier or the person who's receiving the cash should not be doing the double entry in the accounting system. And both these individuals would have separate user codes. So you can actually use data analytics to make sure that the entries have been done correctly using the correct login code. You can actually do uh, three-way matches between sales orders, GDNs, and invoices to make sure they all match. So a lot of work that is traditionally done manually 
can now be automated. This will save time for the auditors in control testing and they can focus on areas which require more judgment, more investigation and potentially higher risks as well. Now, at the substantive testing stage, detailed calculations of depreciation on non-current assets can be done. This can be done item-wise or this can be done using approximations, such as you can assume that sales and purchases of non-current assets are mid-month or you could use the exact dates as well. So again, detailed recalculations for each asset category separately. Um, data analytics, another example that can be used is in the classification of items of capital expenditure. You are aiming at checking or identifying if any revenue expenditure has been incorrectly capitalized. So simply put, you have lots of data that you can um, put in different format. You can analyze, you can pick up risks. You can identify trends which are out of the ordinary and you can investigate them further. Just to quickly reiterate, please focus on learning and understanding the uses of automated audit techniques and you should be able to do quite well in any question related to this area in the AA exam.